Here's Damien Barrett. Thanks, Hutchie. I heard you before endorsing the credentials of Lee Tudor as a coach for Melbourne. The man you're about to see in this interview, Daniel Hanbury of the Swans, does the same. He also spoke, speaks about that mark, that famous mark in last year's grand final, exactly what happened to him at Lawns over the summer period. And also, he just starts here by endorsing the Swans' credentials to go back to back. I think so. We feel that um, a lot of the players on our list can can you hold their form or get better this year and we think there's a lot of improvement in the list and um, yeah, we feel a lot of guys can, can get better this year and um, if we uh, keep playing the, f the way we want to play and, and um, you know, aim to keep building over the year we feel like we're a good chance to, to um, you know, hopefully have some success towards the point into the finals. In addition, um, most recently to that midfield group or in the future anyway, uh, Mitchell who I know yeah. you, uh, you think very highly of, don't you? <laughs> Yeah, we call him, uh, we nickname him Diesel around the footy club. Uh, there's no doubt he's got the best, uh, best hands I've seen at, uh, at training. All things going well, he's had some tough luck with injury, but I think he can be a, a super player for us over, over a number of years. He's going to be a couple of open coaching jobs at the end of this season. Lee Tudor, a man on the Swans coaching list at the moment, often gets his name linked to roles. Is he ready in your eyes? I think he's capable. I think. Uh, Depending whether he wants to go or not, I think whatever he sets his mind to, he's capable of doing. I think he came to the footy club. Um, you know, Horse is really keen to, to, I suppose, get Lee to the footy club after being at successful clubs and seeing the way they worked. I think he was at Geelong and St Kilda in their premiership years and, um, sorry, in their grand final and premiership years. And um, the way he views footy is different to a lot of others. He's got a good view on it. Um, he views the game as a whole and has a lot of different theories and ideas. And he's brought that to the footy club and it's a massive reason as to why I've been successful. Can you clear up what happened at the Falls Festival with you and that van over summer? Purely and simply, there's a mate of mine, uh, Corey Beetham, were, were camping in uh, this camper van, which is actually uh, is that, yeah, my camp, camper van I took to lawn and um, parked it there, parked it there uh, day one and um, yeah, got in at about uh, 1 or 2 a.m. that night, um, went to sleep and uh, usually the, we had the parking brake on and woke up that next morning and as, uh, as I woke up, before I wake up, there's a massive sort of click or a big snap sort of thing. Um, then all of a sudden, Corey sort of jumped down and said, mate, we're rolling, we're rolling. And it was sort of just woken up and a bit dazed from the night before and the car's rolling and um, yeah, all of a sudden it just crashed into two or three cars. So that's pretty much fundamentally what it was. Luckily, no one was hurt, no one was injured. Yep. Do you think, being, a, being from Melbourne, do you think at some stage you might contemplate playing in that city or? I think, um, you know, people say a week's a long time, I think a year's a long time, I think three years is, a, is a, an eternity. So. Um, I think it's too early to say. I think I'll just focus on playing footy for the next three or four years at the footy club and try and do that to the best of my ability and hopefully achieve some success. And um, at the end of my next contract, I'm, I'm sure I'll be better equipped to, to answer, you, answer you then. I want you to talk about the mark, the first quarter mark in the grand final of last year. It's already an iconic moment in AFL history. Take us through it. I just remember um, getting called in and not having any idea where David Hale was or Mummy was. And, they just crashed in at the right time, made the mark look pretty good. And as you can, if you actually play it slow, I actually don't really mark it, just sort of falls into my hands, luckily. So it was a pretty lucky mark in the end. And um, you know, when you get caught in, you just got to go, really. In many eyes, you were almost a Norm Smith medalist. Um, it was a big game for you, wasn't it, personally? Uh, I think so. I think the years previous, we'd played, I'd played, I think, four finals, I think, in an elimination and semi final in the last two years. And it was pretty um, down on my performance in those games. Um, you know, I'd played pretty good games during those years and, and I felt like I'd um, flopped in the big games and hadn't um, produced for my teammates and um, yeah I just had a big focus with a few people um, both inside and outside the footy club um, about preparing myself to play well in finals and um, uh, yeah I think I had a pretty solid final series up until the grand final and um, yeah once again to play um, you know a good role for that, for that game was um, I suppose um, something yeah as I said I was proud of. Dan Hanabry speaking exclusively to Damien Barrett in our Life Broker Sunday agenda. He's one of the contenders too, right up there in the Lou Richards medal, despite the fact that uh, he's been benched in the rolling All-Australian team.